This time, we look at the life and sad ending of legendary motorcyclist and national hero T. E. Lawrence. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Now during our Salisbury trip this year, we visited Bovington Camp, and whilst we visited the Tank Museum, we were somewhat amiss and that we did not visit Clouds Hill. Clouds Hill is a National Trust site, it should be a place of pilgrimage to any self-respecting motorcyclist. Now you may well ask why, after all, it's a fairly modest building in a quiet corner near Bovington Camp. But Clouds Hill is the final home of one T.E. Lawrence, also known as Lawrence of Arabia. A few hundred metres up the road from Clouds Hill stands a small memorial next to a tree. And it was on this spot, on the 13th of May 1935, that Lawrence crashed his bruff superior motorcycle and was fatally injured. The details of the accident have been much disputed and the subject of some conspiracy theory over the years. But what seems to have happened is that whilst running at speed, he collided with two boys on bicycles, swerved and went off the road. Corporal Catchpole, who was based at nearby Bovington Camp, helped move his body over to Bovington Camp Hospital, where he stayed for six days before he eventually succumbed to his injuries. Lawrence's story began in this house in Tramado, Carmarthenshire, in South Wales, in 1888. He trained as an archaeologist was co-opted into the British Army as a smokescreen for a survey of the Negev Desert in 1914. By 1916, the Arab revolt against the Turkish Ottoman Empire was failing, so Lawrence was sent on an intelligence gathering mission and he quickly concluded that Prince Faisal would be the best person to lead the Arab revolt against the Ottomans. It was decided that the use of guerrilla tactics would serve them best against a superior force in the open desert. In November 1917, he was captured, tortured and abused by guardsmen. He would subsequently escape, but he would never recover from the trauma that he encountered. At the end of the war, he would help plan the fall of Damascus, but ultimately would not be present at the Arabs' greatest success. After the war, he worked for the Foreign Office at the Paris Peace Conference, but would be frustrated by the lack of autonomy that was eventually awarded to the Arab nations. He worked as an advisor to Churchill in 1920, but again quickly gave it up. He retreated to this house in London, where he wrote the Seven Pillars of Wisdom. This was an account of his war experiences. The book was successful and made Lawrence famous, so he joined the RAF under an assumed name in 1922, in a full effort to avoid the limelight. And it was in this period that he met George Bruff, the maker of Bruff's superior motorcycles. Bruff's hand-built machines so enraptured Lawrence that he ended up owning seven of them. He did order an eighth, but actually died before the machine was delivered. He would christen each bike George, giving them a number rather like a king afterwards. George I was acquired in 1923, right to George VII in 1934. During this period, he would write enthusiastically about his experiences of adding his bruffs at speed. In 1923, he was forced out of the RAF, his identity having been exposed. So he joined the Royal Tank Corps at Bovington, purchased Clouds Hill and continued his writing in peace. Our Bruff superiors were all about speed and competition. And with this in mind, in 1926, he decided to race an aircraft on his Bruff superior. Now this episode has been reenacted a few times over the years, and on most occasions, the aircraft has rolled out the winner. However, in the original event in 1926, it was Lawrence on his Bruff that was the victor. George Bruff would continue to develop the Bruff Superior throughout his run, with each model outperforming the last, and each time Lawrence would acquire the new machine, until George the Seventh in 34. He is pictured here on George the Seventh, the machine he rode on that fateful morning in May 1935. And I don't really buy into the conspiracy theories behind Lawrence's death, nor do I think he had a death wish, although the evidence of his race against the plane 
clearly indicates a man with a love of speed and, of course, danger. A short distance from the house stands the church where Lawrence's funeral took place back in 35. It was attended by the great and the good of the day. I was, of course, the source of much media interest. Lawrence's war exploits and, of course, his writing, having now made him a national hero. Neurosurgeon Hugh William Cairns attended Lawrence during his final hours. He wrote extensively about Lawrence's injuries and would push for the military to adopt crash helmets for their dispatch riders, which by the midpoint of the war they did. And perhaps the lives saved by these crash helmets makes a fitting epitaph to T. E. Lawrence. Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs>